Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today we're going to visit with Carrie Fisher from The Afterlife. Carrie has a playlist here, so be sure to check out the other video I've done with Carrie Fisher. All right, so today the, the questions for Carrie come from Lauren Rogers from London. So thank you, Laura, for submitting some questions for Carrie. All right. Let's make sure that we bring in Carrie here. Just a second here. Okay, she has glasses on. That's interesting. I haven't seen her have glasses on before. <laughs> kind of cool. Almost John Lennon like, but a little bit more cool, a little bit more funky than that. All right, so Carrie, we got some great questions for you. Great. She's like, great. It's nice to be here again, Bridget. Yeah, I really enjoyed talking with you the first time and chatting with you the first time. And since there's kind of a Disney connection, because you guys know, if you watch Above Life Channel or my channel on Fairy Grasshopper on YouTube, you know I love Disney. I love Disney. And so you kind of have that, you know, Star Wars and stuff. So <laughs> she's like, yeah, how could I forget? She says, how could I forget? All right. But I did appreciate I, I did really enjoy the energy that you bring. Like we could be friends, like I said, in real life. So she says, absolutely. We can be friends now. She says, we can be friends now. OK. All right. Let's be friends now. All right, so Carrie, you spoke so much before in our previous channeling video about mental health and, and you were very passionate and you were such a good advocate and really described some things so well for many people. And so uh, Lauren asks, her first question is, what is the purpose of mental illness? Can you speak to that from a spiritual perspective? It's funny, she said, it's funny how we need to make everything have a purpose, don't we? You know, when you're a person, when, you, when you're a person, you got a mind, you, uh, you have to make everything make sense. It doesn't, things don't always make sense. They just don't. If, if you can let go of that, of things needing to make sense, then you're gonna be doing well, at least better than I did. It's difficult to say that there's a reason or a purpose for mental illness. I don't, I don't really believe that from a, a spiritual perspective it's not it's not a punishment it's not really a choice that someone makes to have their their mind and their bodies and their you know chemicals and their bodies messed with it's not it's not a choice that people make it's not it's not um something that you choose i think that needs to be real clear with people real clear it's not a choice you make you don't choose mental illness with that there are some some important things I, I think you should know that might help you understand a bit more what this is this disease that that uh, humanity is dealing with in regards to the mind i think um it's important to say that it's it's a bit of a byproduct of the relationships that we're in and the unhealthiness of of our relationships the one-on-one -on -one relationships, the family relationships, the, the sense of belonging and the need for connections that human beings have. It's just part of our nature. And mental illness is definitely a, a part of that, a byproduct of that when things go wrong or things don't work out as we hoped. That disappointment can create a, a bit of an erosion to our psyche and our mind over time can build up you know, fences and barriers and, and protection, protection, um, I wanna say mechanisms, but she's not using that word, protection against being in that situation, again, being hurt like that again, or feeling that 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 sense of, of erosion or of losing yourself, because in every human interaction or relationship you have, the deeper you go, the more of you that you open up and that that vulnerability can be very scary and also very rewarding it can be very rewarding but that is with the right people and and it's really it's really difficult to say that mental illness is related to choosing the wrong people but some of you could certainly relate to that 
could feel that maybe that's the blame or maybe that's the reason you see you have to find a reason you have to kind of make sense of things and it's 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 easier to to blame or to point a finger and say this is what caused this this is why i'm this way and the truth is is you are the way you are because of you and as hard as that is to believe or as tough of a pill that is to swallow it's the truth it may not be popular for me to say that or share that but but again i want to be clear mental illness isn't something that you blame on someone else or a direct cause of of uh, your own inadequacies or your own lack of capability or capacity it's not it's 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 sort of like i guess i would describe it you know how i describe it i would describe it as a trip a state of being a state of mind that when you're less than healthy like in your body and you don't realize it until you're past that point where you've already infected other people around you you know when you have the flu or something like that mental illness is sort of like that too you don't realize how your relationships are deteriorating and the, that sense of loss like of connection with yourself and being beyond the state of repair is something that i know that i personally dealt with and could never quite come back from that fully and and it was difficult although i resisted the the i resisted the belief as long as i could that i was damaged or somehow not worthy and not wanting the attention and, and kind of over that, overdone with that. Recognizing that it's sort of like a chronic, it's like a chronic dull pain. Mental illness is sort of like that. And that's why so many people seek, um, seek numbing <laughs> sources like addictions are, are such a, it's what kind of came first, the addiction or the mental illness, the mental illness, because it's an unhealthy behavior that stems from something that isn't healthy in the first place. And that's, that's, the, that's the piece that people should really understand, that the addiction is a form of mental illness. It comes from, it stems from a mental unhealthiness in, in mind or in heart, however that, that, that may be for you. Wow, that's an awesome question, you guys. That's profound. See, I love Carrie Fisher. She really talks and gives us like this, oh, just thank you. Oh, I just wanna like hug you. Thank you for that. That was great, great. All right, so next question. Good job, Lauren, great questions here. What are effective ways of healing abuse and generational trauma? Oh, fascinating, this is fascinating. So let's take that the first, um, the first part of that is what are effective ways of healing abuse from your spiritual perspective, Ms. Carrie Fisher? Mm. If I say forgiveness, it's sort of cliche, but it's the absolute truth. And, and you know, it isn't about forgiving the person that you perceive as causing the trauma or the situation or the circumstance, but the receiving of it, forgiving yourself for the believing that you deserved that or trying to find some way to let yourself off the hook for feeling like you could have stopped it when you couldn't have. It, it was beyond your control. It was someone else that had an abuse of power and for you to in any way blame yourself it's normal it's rational it, as a, like a survival instinct or mechanism you start to to play in your mind strategies or theories of of how you can avoid it you know staying out staying at a friend's house overnight instead of staying at your house 
those kinds of things, you know, not coming home when, when that abusive person was there or trying to avoid those circumstances. But it isn't, that kind of thinking isn't normal. It's a, a trauma response when the mind goes into overdrive or hypervigilant mode to protect you, to keep you safe. And the act of forgiveness is a freedom for you to let yourself off the hook for what you felt like you could have done more, different, or better, because that doesn't help anyone looking back and, and with that hindsight, what is best for you is to be able to heal that is by forgiving yourself, the circumstances, the situations, the things that were beyond your control because when there's an abuse situation, there's someone else that's in power and you're not. And so you receive that abuse. And with the receiving of the abuse, you also receive the energies of the, the shame and the pain and the hurt and the distrust that's coming from the person that is, is creating the abuse or causing the trauma. I hope that makes sense. I hope that that, that makes sense so that it doesn't sound like I'm, you know, just giving you an out of the box uh, answer to that. It, it's definitely deeper than, than um, what has been touted previous. The concept of forgiveness, you mean? Is that what you mean? Forgiveness. You guys, I, so Carrie, I've talked, I've talked to clients that are in their healing journeys as well. And one of the things I say in regards to forgiveness, that's a big word, you guys, and it's a heavy word. To me, it's a heavy word, but in order for it to transform into a light, like a freedom energy, I take the word for and give, I separate the word into two, for. Who is this for? What is this energy for? What is this connection for? What is, what is this? And the give part is giving back to yourself whatever you felt that you lost as a result of what was happening or what happened to you. And it's not about reliving the trauma or the abuse, but it's about, and it's not about excusing it or making excuses either. It's about recognizing the, true, the trueness of the feelings that are there and the reality of that kind of the myth that that protects you from actually being free to let that go to forgive for yourself to be for yourself and then to give yourself that freedom she says that's beautiful and then i see like this big bird this big white bird with black wings that's gorgeous it's a crane she said it's a crane ah oh. you know they have real kind of long they kind of you know got kind of long ugly legs and um, some people think that they're, you know, nuisance. She says, but they're, they're gorgeous. You know, they're, they're by the water and they know what they want. They know where they need to be and to be free. And they go where they're inspired to be. Huh. Interesting. So you guys that are watching this channeling with Carrie Fisher, go ahead and Google the energy or uh, Google and look up what totem animal crane means, the bird crane. That was great. Thanks, Carrie. Um, so here's another question. Um, she does ask about generational trauma, but I'm not going to go into that because I think we'll go deep, 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 deep. I'm going to jump to the next questions because she has some other great, great questions too. So let's ask Carrie, was there a specific reason that as far as I'm aware, she says, you chose not to disclose your sexuality in life? she says, huh. she says, it's a personal choice. She said, I didn't think it was anybody's business. I don't, and I still don't. I don't think it's anyone's business. Your choices are your own to make and you shouldn't have to justify or validate anybody else's feelings or senses about you. That's simply your choice and it's nobody else's business. Unless they want to, of course, ask you out on a date or something like that. Very good answer, Carrie Fisher. All right. See, I love her, you guys. Cool. See, she's my kind of girl. Like, I could totally buy her a drink and we could hang out. Well, maybe not. Maybe not a drink. How about some lemonade and sit on a porch somewhere? <laughs> Let's have some lemonade and sit on the porch <laughs> and rock in the rocking chairs and just talk, right? All right. Whew. Okay. <laughs> she literally made me feel like still magnolias or something or like in Georgia or something. Like, we could smell the, 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 um, 
but in the air we can smell like blooming flowers blooming and just like being all funny like in a movie okay um do you continue to write and sing in the afterlife she says in a different way not the way you would think it's not the same as being a person you don't really have the the faculties in spirit you're not you're not confined or restricted by them either and the only way that i can communicate with bridget even now here is through uh, leveraging what we have in common, that is the energy stream of consciousness. And so the writing and the singing comes through in the same way as not me as a person or as uh, an entity actually doing writing or singing, but passing that along as a vibration, as inspiration or insight to others is a wonderful thing to do. And many, many of your favorites Artists, writers, songwriters, um, musicians, they love that. They do the same thing. Playwrights do the same thing. That's why creativity is such a, a wonderful, intuitive energy communication channel is because that's how it works. So yes, when you think other people, when you listen to a song or a music and you someone else comes to mind that you think, oh, I wonder if they were inspired by so-and-so. Yes, that so-and-so person, certainly former person, former person, that spirit certainly inspired them in some way. Yes, whether they're conscious of it or not, it doesn't, it doesn't even matter if they're conscious of it, but uh, definitely inspired it. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, and then she asks, did you meet Dorothy Parker? I feel like she's a jazz musician, is that right? Like a jazz person or something? She looks African-American is what she looks like. It reminds me of a Prince connection too. She says, yeah, similar, same. I don't know if he must have sang a song about her or something. There's some kind of a connection, which is interesting because I'm recording this video the week before the anniversary of Prince's Crossing, his transition. So interesting that all these things are coming full circle. Hmm. Very interesting how that works, isn't it? She says, Carrie says, yeah, we could talk a lot about some of this, couldn't we? Yes, we could. Interesting. And I'm thinking like about Prince. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, 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 enough. All right. Thank you so much, Lauren for from London for asking questions for Carrie Fisher in the afterlife. And thank you, Carrie, for showing up and being here again as a guest on Above Life channel on YouTube. If you have questions or someone that you would like to request a channel for. Um, when I need to be inspired to do a channel, I like to go to the You Choose the Channel video, and I'll link that here below, so the You Choose the Channel video, and I look on there and pull somebody out and channel just like this. So if you have somebody um, you'd like to, to hear from, please make sure you submit their name along with five questions that I can ask them. Also, please include where you're from so that I can give you a shout out as well, just like I did with Lauren in this video. This is Bridget at Above Life Channel. The purpose is always, always with every video that we do here is to inspire your spirit to fill you with hope because it's your life. This is your life after all, and your job is to live it. Just live it. Thanks for watching.